This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 401, live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, PA. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is right there, looking outside the sunny streets of Dormont as the sun goes down over the neighborhood. Uh, but with me, uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and we got the crew with us, and we figured out the internet. We figured out how the internet works. We, cl- we cleared the tubes of the internet. So that John Chachilla can join us from Studio D, Studio C. We can do D for Dormont. D for Dormont, yes, uh, is with us. He is a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. John Chachilla, how you doing? Pretty good. Well, n- now that we got the yeah. technical difficulties, now that it out. works, now that we can hear you and we can see you, and uh, and it's good. We see the air conditioner <laughs> units in the window. Uh, you sure. you've really adopted Dormont summer. I just got a message. Your Firefox is critically out of date. An update <laughs> is required to stay secure. That's what fixed it. But it works great with Hangouts, so so who yeah. knows? Also with us, Crazy Krause. Ron Krause is joining us back here in the studio. And why can't I remember how I usually introduce you? You're you're the Windows Maven, is is how I I, I think of you on this show. Okay. The That's Windows fine. Windows Advocate, Ron Krause, also worked also works in a big bank international uh corporation uh <laughs> yeah one of those advocating for windows and getting a sweet uh, office swag <laughs> yeah. uh how you doing this week sir i'm very good how about yourself good 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 um but uh thank you and of course uh Dutter is not with us tonight she's off on assignment uh but uh this is the awesome cast you can check out everything at awesomecast.com you can join us when the internet works at 7 p.m eastern time at the awesome cast facebook page and uh you can also uh, interact with us in other ways including awesomecast at sogertronmedia.com tweet us at awesomecast and please join the awesomecast facebook group uh where we share a lot of the stories that we get to uh through the week uh and a lot of it becomes part of our rundown or our potential stories uh here we may not get to your story but it's probably in my rundown right now. I'm sorry. Or you're welcome. Wherever that may <laughs> apply. Also, uh, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcast, Alex, to Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Music uh, Podcast, and iHeartRadio. Oh. Oh. You got you to rename the Google Music. Oh, wait, that's what's, right. What is it? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So what did they end up? Like, I noticed the YouTube premium popping up on my YouTube there's a google, it's now google google as of today it's google podcast google, google Pod- it is google podcast yes it is oh okay wait let me fix it right now on my document so unless, I- unless they change it tomorrow but <laughs> there it is or over on google podcast for now and look there's the awesome cast and there's on, wait is it on google podcast is it are we are we featured are we featured no no, no, no that's, that's your list there. isn't it I don't yeah, know why. Hold list. on, I gotta, I gotta move a thing so this will work. There it is. Hey, there it is. <laughs> For you guys on video, uh, and of course, video versions on the YouTube. Is it still YouTube? Are we sure it's YouTube today? <laughs> yes. Okay. I think it's just becoming the letter U. The other U. <laughs> well, on the U, uh, <laughs> and also on the Facebook video as well. Every Tuesday, that's at that part. Riversedge.com, uh, RiversedgePGH.com. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they provide our pre-show music for you guys live. Plus, they stream us every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and I join them once a month for the awesome thing of the month. Also, shout out our good friends from Yajagoff. Just join the network over there. They will be streaming uh, coming up in July. They had an announcement stream on the Facebook page for River's Edge. So really excited about that to see them in the fold with us over there. And also thanks to our other streaming uh, partners on the West Coast at the 405media.com to stream us every weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific time or noon Eastern 
And of course, uh, uh, and if you can't catch the show live, uh, no, that's the part for a tweeter. Uh, <laughs> that I don't read the blue part. Uh, anyways, uh, if you want to be part of, this, part of the studio audience, you can hit us up at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Join us here in our not secret location here in Beachview, right across from the taco stand. Uh, hit up awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com for info and let us know on that. And if you want to advertise with the show, if you're looking for some great options that won't break the bank, uh, you can do that. Hit up the very responsible producer, Missy, that I don't thank enough for putting up with me and making me organized. Uh, and if we hit her up also at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com thank you our Patreon supporters patreon.com slash awesomecast literally helping keep the lights on here in the studio at the coffee club $5 level they're gonna watch us tech break down why Chilla's feed doesn't work apparently this week while we listen to banjo music parse that one guys uh, those guys at the coffee club $5 level are Matt Weller and our friend Diggy Don- John DeGore uh, and as well as fan of the show at the $1 level, Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor show on the Twitter. Thank you much. Thank you much for being part of the show. It's been a day guys. If you, if you look at my Instagram feed, you can see why. Uh, but anyways, thanks. Thank you everybody for supporting the show. Let's get to our awesome things of the week. I'm going to start with, uh, Kraus. While I figure out what my awesome thing of the week is. Now, I need to preface this by saying this hasn't been turned on for me yet. Okay. So I'm going that it's awesome because of the announcement. But Android Messenger Messages, their text messaging app, is now available for the web. Which basically takes all your text messages and moves them over to your computer or tablet or whatever you need. Kind of does the thing iMessage does if you're in the Mac Yes, ecosystem. exactly. Okay. It, and it's it's kind of like, it looks like Google is actually trying to bring the iMessage features to this application. Mm-hmm. So if you click the link there, Sorg, you'll see uh, basically the setup is um, there's a little barcode that you Man, kind of scan. It, it looks like every a messenger app that you've ever seen. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I don't think I've seen the QR code part. Uh, yeah, the, the, it's probably hasn't loaded yet. Has the built-in uh, GIF search and everything. No, I'm not seeing the QR part. Yeah, it talking should about be. in the article. Um, like we're seeing the side by side of the desktop versus mobile, which looks like you know all the Google apps look like these days. Yeah. Um, a little bit of the GIFy action as well, and the searches and the icons and everything. So I, I kind of like how this comes up. Oh, you can high five. You can. Uh, oh, that's one of the selections in the GIF search. Yes. I see. So. Well, that's good. I mean, that this is something that um, that that situation, the messaging situation over on Android, has been ridiculous lately. Yes, it has. So it's good to see that that that's kind of coming together. So awesome, uh, Chilla. What is your awesome thing of the week? Uh, real quick on the Android messages topic, I'm interested to see how this works mm-hmm. because when you think about iMessage iMessage is grabbing the message from other Apple users through iCloud, right? When you when I send you an iMessage, it doesn't go through my carrier as a text message. It oh, goes right. Okay. To Apple. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a and it's then a digital Apple message. takes that message and knows knows every one of your endpoints mm-hmm. and broadcasts it to those end to those known endpoints. My guess is Google is taking the message off of your phone and copying it hmm. to Google land. How does, wait, is that how, so so you, you're saying Apple just knows the endpoints and they take them and Google's just absorbing them off your phone. That's my guess. So if you're, like if my phone's off, right, mm-hmm. but my iPad's on, I'll get your iMessage on my iPad. Mm-hmm. Chill, I'm, and, you... and with iCloud, it's now also duplicating that in the cloud mm-hmm. and making kind of a backup copy of that. And then that's how it's... Because when it when it breaks up, when it knows all of your endpoints, let's pretend you have a phone, an iPad, and a Mac, right? It takes that message and it delivers that message three times. It's three unique messages. Okay. So what, that's why when you delete on one, it doesn't delete on the other, unless you just recently turned on um, iCloud messages. Um, 
my guess is Google was doing something after it hits the device and then bumping it up to the cloud. What I'm interested in is how are they then sending it? It's using RCS. That rich, uh, they had an article. In fact, I think there might be a link in the article that I posted that explains a little bit about it. But they're working with the various cellular providers to turn on this rich communication service, mm-hmm. which is uh, basically going to enhance, give more enhanced text messaging features. So Android I wonder if devices. the carrier then has to know you're an Android user. I'm, I'm just very interested in how yeah. they're making the the sausage. Hmm. I, I, <clears throat> I've been trying. I, I've actually opened. I got a messages app update yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, I'm getting this." And then I found uh, I, I opened up messages, and I don't have the the scan piece yet. The, the scan yet. So, yeah, that's what I don't have that part yet either. So they say over the next week. Mm-hmm. To me, this makes the magic of like Chromebook, well, anything, right? If you can get to a browser. Uh, exactly. Nice. So it brings it all together. Yeah, exactly. Because you get to a browser, you have all your access mm-hmm. to all those messages. Because that's the biggest thing. Like, like uh, uh, producer Missy doesn't have a Mac. So right. like usually if I want to send something like I'll throw it in iMessages because most people mm-hmm. you know are on phone that's it but if we're like hey here's a link for you to go and work on on your computer like it doesn't make sense for me to do it because it goes through a phone and then what and you yeah, know then it's no good to it's her, broken right? it's broken at that point so that's why I'll throw it in Facebook Messenger or fa- I'll throw it in Google Hangouts because I know that's at least open over there and I can deal on the laptop and everything like that so th- this brings all that. A little back here and a little more and, out there too. And, and Google's usually, they usually think things through pretty well. But if you remember all the issues people had if they went from an iPhone to an Android device. Right. So, and like, how is Google going to handle that doing yeah, the like, same thing? There's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a lot of magic to how this well, all works. Well, good. Because my brother, <laughs> my brother, my brother came out to me today as a future Android user, and I was trying to talk him down from it. Uh, <laughs> and that is, that is another point I can throw. I was like, man, remember what happened when you went for Android and your messages didn't work for like six months? Well, guess what you're going to have to deal with again? Both <laughs> ways this time. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> no, um, it was weird because we we're at a table. And he, he's just like, yeah, I think I'm going to Android. I'm just like, there's like, there's like three of us at the table. We're just like, listen, we're family. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you. But... And we love you. And we, <laughs> but we do not support your decisions. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but no, I, seriously, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I won't look that much down on him for trading up. I don't know. It's weird. Doesn't he, that change his color? He's on back. Your t- yeah. Messaging? I'm a, do you want to be a blue bubble, Matt? Do you want to be yeah. a blue bubble? <laughs> no, they become a green bubble. A green. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to be a green? Really? It's not easy being a green bubble. It's not. I, I look, I do. I look at, I'm like, oh, that's, that's, sorry you're on the other side there, green bubble. Yeah, yeah. You just get like, disappointed. Be like, man, I can't And I've you. known John for how many years? I was in his wedding and I <laughs> had no idea. I had no idea. That I was considered a green bubble. <laughs> Now you really know what he thinks of you. <laughs> All right. Holy crap. We need to move on before this metaphor gets really out of hand. Uh, Shilla, what is your so awesome thing? My awesome thing is, and you're going to have to help direct me if you can't see this. Okay, I because, see that. You know, oh, you're good. You're go. good. Right there. So, right in the middle there's, of the shot. A link. That's it. There's got, a link. If you guys an so audio, this, this is a, it's a folding keyboard. Yes. Yes. So it's a folding keyboard, but more than just a folding keyboard. See this little area over here? Is that a trackpad? That is a trackpad. What? It's awesome. <gasps> so when I pair this to any, well, funny enough, when I pair this to the green bubble devices, the, the also known as the Android devices, <laughs> <laughs> you get to use the mouse, which made me extremely happy. So this does not apply add- to iPads. <laughs> <laughs> This is well, <clears throat> I can Bluetooth connect to an iPad and I can use Alt Tab to go through apps. I can do all the normal navigation stuff. I just can't use the mouse. Um, one of the reasons this 
because I want to be able to use something like this with my iPhone and my Android device when they're on my desk at work without actually having to, to reach over and tap them or do anything like that. And all those keyboard commands, I, I can do keyboard commands on iOS. I do get the mouse on Android. And then if I wanted to pair it to a Windows or Mac device, I could do that as well. Um, but there's sometimes where like I'm getting iMessages or I'm getting, uh, even when I'm at home, it's a long form email and my phone's just sitting next to me. I can kind of pull this out mm -hmm. and type out a long formed message. Um, so far, I'm really happy with the device. Uh, it uses your typical, I don't know if you can see that, uh, micro USB on off button pair button. Um, it doesn't, from what I can tell right now, it doesn't support like multiple Bluetooth profiles where you can sync quick tap like iPhone or, or Android, iOS or Android or, or whatever. You know, it might not, it might pair. not, but if you pull up the, uh, the, 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 the page on Amazon, it does come in black and white to match yes, whatever the, your green bubble device may look like. Yes. There you go. Um, oh. so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, was playing around with it today. The only, the only con I have found to it so far is when you close it, it's magnetic. So it's magnetically closed. It'll stay together in your bag. When you open it, it's not magnetic. And I've had other ones where there's like little slide locks to lock the keyboard open. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, if this is on your lap, you can kind of see as I'm pushing the left and right uh, sides of the devices, it'll, it, it's not lappable. Mm. Um, but it works great on any other surface. And it's to compare it to um, here's, Actually, here's the iPhone next to it. Um, it's about almost the same size as an iPhone 10. Nice. So at least one in an um, Iron Man case. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, I Kraus got Kraus was playing around with the keys today. I, I'm pretty happy. I'm not keyboard picky, mm -hmm. but if you're keyboard picky, I mean, I found it to be just as good as any other laptop. So, um, uh, Brian Crawford over at River's Edge, he's saying that uh, he has that one. Um, I instinctively he has everything. He's really, yeah, he's up on this. Like he's like competing with you guys uh, as far as this stuff goes. He also, um, uh, I'm sorry, I also put it in the cart before I realized that was a trackpad that doesn't work in an iPad. Uh, but I'm amazed that it's under thirty dollars on Amazon. Yes, that's that's great. Price points perfect. It's supposed to get over thirty days of battery life on a single charge. It's also I mean, Android versus an Apple device, so. Um, that that usually tracks. So mm -hmm. yeah, awesome, awesome. So my my awesome thing of the week is more kind of an awesome uh, use case. Uh, you know, I talked about picking up the the Apple Watch a few weeks ago, and more and more it's become like integrated. And how do I use it? And I feel like there's certain things that I'm still not even jumping on. You know, I turn it on when I go for a walk and you know pick up Pokemon stuff, or I'm going through the airport or something, which I'll be doing this week when I go to Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska. That Nebraska we always used to talk about as being uh, technology deficient. Uh, amazingly, they have Uber and Lyft in uh, Lincoln. It looks like so I won't be trying. But that they probably out. don't have Pokemon. Stops. They, no, they have po no, no. I remember <laughs> specifically going to some Pokemon stops last year uh, when I was out there. But um, but anyways, um, so you guys know I do production for like pro wrestling shows, right? And uh, it's usually sitting much like I am here. Uh, you know, a very similar system uh, of switching video and I'm on a radio and I'm, I'm kind of saying, hey, shots on you. Hey, shots on you. Hey, uh, get this guy. You know, hey, you know. Uh, uh, get ready for the entrance, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And as I'm going and I'm uh, up in the booth away from things, uh, so it's kind of nice to, you know, and when I was really how e realizing how easy it was to take some notes, because sometimes I got to be like, okay, take a note, do this. Hey, let's make a GIF of this shot that I just saw. And to take the, you take your watch and I'm kind of, if you're like just going like this by your mouth, visual for you guys, um, you know, Dick tracing it. But but I've like become the master of nonchalantly just pulling it up, saying, "Hey Siri, da 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 da." Typically a reminder. I actually have not done notes themselves yet on it, but I know I would on the phone a lot while I was driving. Uh, even while I'm driving, it's great to take a note too, because uh, you know uh, I don't know if you guys have this problem where I'll say, "Hey Siri," it has to wait to kick. Shut up! Uh, he has to wait to kick into. 
stop, stop, stop. It has to wait to kick into the Bluetooth, and then it has to time right, and sometimes yeah. it, it like kicks on and off, and it's really frustrating. You know, you just want to say, ha, hmm, um, you, know, you know, do this thing, remind me of blah, 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 blah. Hey, hmm, call my wife. Hey, hmm, do this, right? And, uh, and, and it's so much easier to do it when it's this. And also, it's really cool to see when you say it and your phone does hear you, and you see the phone kick into Siri, and then it realizes you're talking to the watch, that it's closer or whatnot, and just kicks right off. Yeah. It's like, that is invaluable to me right now, right? You know, and, and this is something that I've used, you know, again, motors and cars, I'm in the middle of like, you know, the race of like, like but getting it's it like, that close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But getting that close, like you can't screw that up mm -hmm. and it's so responsive and you can just do anything, respond to anything. Um, and, it, and it's, it's really has been kind of game changing for that kind of thing. As far as a voice, like more than it was always frustrating to do it on the pebble. And side note, I'm very excited. I didn't realize that my brother said that they announced this like a year ago. I had no idea. I didn't know that the end of this month was the end of pebble support officially with Fitbit. Wow, Rest I by so chance picked up my Apple Watch a couple weeks ago, so which was the next step whenever those, that was going to go away for me. So I, I, I feel fortunate for that part. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's that's kind of interesting when that happened. There is if you get it, go ahead. If, if you get a chance, check out the uh, Drafts app. I think it's been covered on a couple other. I have it, but I haven't really gotten into using it. I actually deleted it because I'm like, I'm not. This isn't. I don't see the advantage beyond notes on this. Okay. Yeah. Because the, the okay. Because you can actually create like sub sub organized notes, right? Um, which I think would be versus could be useful versus on your use case. versus if I'm just taking a notes with the notes app with Siri. Well, that's the other thing. Is it gonna is it is Siri gonna interact interoperate with it? It does. It, it does. You tell you can you you um hey mm -hmm. I think it's like tell drafts to create something in okay. X, Y. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of commands. They've actually built the app around they and they actually have a proper watch app. Um so they've actually built uh it, it's a purpose built watch app as well. Awesome. Um and uh and, and yeah, so so it, it it's a pretty cool and and I don't know because I don't know how too many people with the Android watch, watches anymore. Actually, I think Shachi still has one. I'll have to ask him how his kind of operates with that kind of situation. So, but obviously they haven't really been pushing those. So I'm kind of worried about the future for that, for jumping into something like that. Well, from home, you know, I can do, hey, gee, mm -hmm. um, take a note or yes. add to my shopping list. Yes. Those, you know, that all works. And I keep I have to keep remembering the things that are in the Google ecosystem that I can do with that. Right. That I can do when I pull up a Google Assistant on my phone, right? That is in that ecosystem. I know Google Assistant has been really great for me when again, hands free ish. Mm -hmm. I can't sit and type something and be like, Oh crap, make an event for this, this, and this. And it's it's at least mostly there that it's in my calendar. And then it's like I know there's a spot there. I won't accidentally book over it. Maybe right. maybe I need to correct it and add an address and that kind of stuff to it. But it's there, and that's that's huge too. So you know, again, though, I wish you know, you had a Google Assistant on your Apple Watch that would make it that much nicer yeah. than me. But you know, again, it is here in the office. It is there. You know, I'm sure I'll be carrying a device with Google on it sooner or later. Maybe that'll be the glasses. Whoever gets there first, I'll green bubble for for glasses, smart glasses that work. Okay. So, nice. You know, that's the term now. It's just going to be green bubbling. Green bubbling. Yes. <laughs> I use the that is that notification piece of it a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, for the job I do, I do evening work. You know, somebody needs a change, upload an app, something like that. So, and the guys at work always laugh at me, but as soon as I realize I have a change that evening, I say, "Hey, G, remind me at eight forty-five. I have a change at nine, mm -hmm. and then." At 8.45, I'm sitting in the living room with the wife watching TV, and I get that little alert. I have a reminder for Ron, and guess what? <laughs> that I'm not late to my change. Yeah. So well, but I use that all the time. That's the interesting thing about Google, though. I bet you if they come out with another another glass or whatever they're going to call it, I, I have a feeling it'll be cross 
platform. Yeah. I mean, Glass the first time was cross-platform. That that AR just a line app is cross-platform. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't see them going away from that. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm not going away from is Slice on Broadway. Our good friends right up here on the street, up Broadway from here. Like, not even a mile away from us, so you know that pizza's super fresh. Uh, thank you to them for supporting uh, Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for a good long time. They're right up here in Broadway as well as uh, down at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, East End, and Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. That's the only non-City of Limits one that they did. Excuse me. That was that pizza from earlier. Uh, but uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and uh, let them know the awesome cast sent you. Uh, there's some more awesome stuff uh, coming at you from our community. First of all, he's in the chat room representing, and he's got his awesome thing of the week. They got a mixer. Uh, uh, Brian says, my awesome thing of the week is the wizardry we can now perform with our soundboard. And if you're on video, it's going to be a little bit better. Watch the fader pots moves up and down magically. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those X32s. Uh, I know we've, we've dealt with one uh, that's like it's completely digital, doesn't have any of the faders or anything, and you just basically do everything in the software and, and the physically interacts with you. Man, you know, it's cool that like this is more accessible that like a podcast can do this because the time that I saw this, it was with Pro Tools at the Art Institute, and it was a hefty, expensive, expensive. situation, right? Um, it was laughably running about five versions back on whatever Mac OS they had at the time when they got it. Wow. But, you know, but that was the first time. The first time you see moving faders is like, you remember, you remember your first moving faders, um, guys. And, uh, and I'm, it's cool to see that Brian's got that rolling up there in the, the River's Edge studios. Thank, thanks a lot for sharing that, uh, as well. And, and then I guess, um, uh, Alex said that he was working with something like that. Uh, and actually, those aren't the first ones to do it. I know they've been doing it for a good while I, uh, since they've been doing software boards like that too. Uh, the Riz, the Riz actually was with us here on Friday, um, and we were doing some Riz plays games and having some fun with that. He was playing some some uh, new stuff, Detroit, Detroit becoming human. I know, which was very weird. Um, but anyways, he he shared some kind of uh, uh fun stuff this week. Uh, first of all, as I'm, I'm kind of rolling through this, uh, uh, there's, there's a really fun RPG. Um, it's, uh, I don't, is the, is this the name of it? Is it, is it a shark, just like, it's just referred to as a shark RPG. What, oh, Ruin Vacations is the name of it, I think. And you're a shark and you, you ruin people's days on the beach by being a shark it's basically jaws the video game like it looks like like how friday the 13th has friday the 13th the video game which is like yes this is everything i wanted friday the 13th the video game to be this just looks like it's 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 just picturesque views and you're a shark and you roll in and you cause havoc oh jeez <laughs> um yeah that gets pretty vicious doesn't it uh yeah so go be a shark uh yeah. There used to be there was a big um shark simu there was a shark simulator that was actually on Steam. Really? It was Windows only. Um, but it was on Steam and it, it went free to play hmm. because the the uh the company that was making it I don't know if the company went out of business or or what how that all worked out, but they, they released it for free and it's still a pretty big deal. Um I see a lot of youtube game videos of the shark simulator on steam mm. so it's a very popular game type i don't understand it personally ever since but... jaws on the nintendo entertainment system <laughs> that was not terribly great actually um so another one that you shared this was kind of cool um this is the onward invitational it is a uh vr esports so, uh, which is, hey, here's a bunch of, this actually looks like a scene from Ready Player One, because uh, <laughs> everybody in their socks, um, on, on these mats, in a room, with headsets on, just looking off into space. Uh, <laughs> this is great. You know, just the optics on this alone. And then you get into the game, and it's, uh, oh, wait, what was it? 
Hold on. There you go. And it looks like um, it's relative. Look, there's a guy laying on the ground. So this is like a, I guess this is kind of like a Call of Duty sort of game. And and you you do have to crouch the crouch. You have to lay on the ground to, to lay prone and everything. Uh, so it's pretty. Also, I don't know. Whatever scene I was in looked really boring. <laughs> so, and there he is kind of creeping around the corner and everything. That has to be exhausting. That's the esports you need because that's actually... Like you, you do have to have a little bit of physical prowess in order to do uh, uh, this for a, a long time. I mean, have you played like Connect for a while? Like you get tired. Yeah, you get tired. It actually warns you. It's like if you, if you feel winded, stop and sit down for a little bit. Yeah, you know, whenever you boot those up, so, just for a little. While. That's cool. Onward Invitational looks like Intel had a big part to ESL. Um, and yeah, it looks like I've never seen this game before, but it looks like a. It looks basically like a Call of Duty. Not quite as polished, but maybe that's because it's a VR kind of setup. So um, go go check that out. That's, that's kind of fun to see that going on. Um, and from there, I think I had one more submitted. Pokemon Go will officially get trading soon alongside a new friend system. I think that's launching this week. This is our friend Brandon in the KC. Um, and uh, I'm excited about this. This is a feature that was like promised. Like one day we'll get to it like two years ago when it came out. Mm-hmm. And and they are finally, you know, again, finally getting to it, right? Uh, so I'm looking forward to that because I know Chachi has all the sweet Pokemons. Although I loved when I found the weird, like, Winky laying down one in, in Las Vegas. He had no idea what it was because uh, he's, he's uh, you know, the Pokemon master I know. Uh, but uh, looking forward to that. It's getting even more social uh, with Pokemon Go. And, and I've been playing it a bit more since uh, uh, discovering the Apple Watch support, to be quite honest. And you, I, th- I think you're going to be able to leave messages or something at different Pokestops for Ooh. friends and gifts. So, yeah, I- I'm pretty excited about this one myself. So I want to leave some messages as I uh, try to retake the Alpine Bar down the street again in the tea station, uh, which has become pretty heated the last week. I understand. I, yeah, I'll pick up your messages when I pass through Fallowfield. That's right. Oh, between you <laughs> and Bobby Cherry, you know, running through. We have a lot of friends that take the tea through this neighborhood. And 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 can, can we leave messages on on the the poke like the poke stops themselves? I th- I think that's what you do. I think because I don't know about the poke stops. I think it. it, it may I'm be hoping just... because we are right next to a church that's a poke stop right here. Like like you can check into it. Like sitting here in this in the studio. Oh, that would be cool. So if I could just be like dropping in, like you know, hey Chilla, I'll see you on the show tonight. You know, or I, I don't know if you could put public messages or something. Um, you know, it, you'll be nice because I've always wanted to do like buying the um. Oh, what is it? What are the pieces that you you drop on that that attract lures? The lures. I've always wanted to do like some kind of campaign or something or 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 something where we throw a lure up on this one next to us, and, but it's on the church, right? Uh, but it'd be great if I can say, you know, hey, from your friends at Sorgatron Media, here's a lure. Uh, come come hang be, out. You know, mm-hmm. like something like that. You know, that's something as as a business that wants to kind of touch base with the community, you know, uh, or even the Pokemon Go players in the community. I've actually been thinking about doing a Pokemon Go walk um, again lately. So I was going to try to gauge interest for that in the neighborhood. But it's a lot of... You could, you could create another a secondary account called Sorgatron Media. That's true. Well, I mean, my username is Sorgatron on there. So Sorgatron Go. <laughs> there you go uh anyways thank you so much guys and again all those are stories from over at the awesome cast facebook group you guys it's too late pokemon go i deleted that app over a year ago but you can come back and it's a whole different game there's challenges there's other things there's like like 300 new pokemans you know there's there's eggs that hatch and boss battles like the the entire even the even the base battles the gyms look and play completely different than they did there I, alex come back alex come back and play pokemon go with us alex i want to trade you this poke this pikachu with a hat okay don't be a green bubble alex. don't be a green bubble alex don't be don't be a digimon alex come back to pokemon go <laughs> Anyways, anyway, speaking of Alex, he's the next ad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Please check him out, alexcars.com and alexcars.media to get you started. That's K A H R S, 
Alex Cars. He's done a lot of great work with us. He's done websites with our company at Psychic Media Services and Sorgatron Media uh, for some of our podcasts and some of our client work and everything, too. Uh, he's done websites, T-shirts for us. He's done DVD covers. Uh, we've collaborated a lot, and I make sure to grab lunch with him or watch a uh, wrestling show uh, whenever I uh, go hang out with him in, Cle- in Cleveland. No, California. That's different the other and a less sad. Uh, anyway, sorry, Cleveland. <laughs> we are a Pittsburgh podcast. But yes, go check it out. AlexCars.com. Alex Cars. AlexanderCars.com. Sorry, I hope he has that one too. And AlexCars.media. And support him for supporting the awesome cast. Okay, we got plenty of stories. Not so much time. I know we ran a little late getting started. So, Chilla. I want you to tell us your second favorite thing of the week <laughs> I'm in here or whatever story you want to bring up. Um, actually, I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about one of Krause's. Oh yeah, that's fine. Talk about the podcast app. So you, I want to talk about it because I think this is always an interesting topic. And if you want to skip this one and go to something else, I'm okay too. But Krause's cable days are over. Oh, yes, they are. What happened? So I cut the cord, you know? I, um, and you've been concerned. Didn't we talk about last yeah, time you were the on? The last time we were on, I was mm-hmm. getting cl- getting to the point. So I ditched the home phone and the cable and bumped my internet two levels. So I was at 50 over 50, and I went to 100 over 100. This, is, this shocks me. This is, I, had a, uh, I think John Carmen was was messaging with me uh, earlier this week. and was like, hey, what do you pay for your internet? And I'm like, I'm getting 100, 100 to 100 for like 75 bucks. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm already paying like 110 for 75, 75. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, and, and I had 25, 25 for years at home. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's uh, 80 five dollars something in that ballpark i mean and, and after the fees and the rental i mean it's, yeah it's oh, right yeah it, i'm the let's be honest quantum now you know Ooh, quantum yeah, so i got a new You're, router are you ready to leap yeah exactly mm-hmm. but so i got oh, the boy i got the router upgrade mm-hmm. um which actually um resolved and then i re rejiggered my house a little bit changed where the router sits I put it on the middle floor, and it used to be in the basement, which improved pretty much everybody's coverage throughout the house. Because now we're talking about AC, and AC travels a little better than the other networks did. And then I decided to go to give um, Directv Now a shot. Mm-hmm. They had to three pay for three months, get the free 4K Apple TV. Wow! And so I I got that package. Um, I can't say that Direct TV Now has been amazing. Mm-hmm. It's good, um, but they they just recently, I guess, went into like version two. Mm-hmm. So there have been some technical difficulties. We had one evening where no matter what we did, we just couldn't get TV to stream. Um, and it's only, we, I don't think we've been there a whole month yet. So that was just one night and every now and again, you know, you'll be watching something. It'll just stop. So you have to pick up the remote hit play again, but it'll usually start back up. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty satisfied. I also do love the idea that, you know, now in three months, because obviously I'm on, I've paid for three months ahead of time, but in three months, if I decide I don't like them. I can give somebody else a try. You've given them three months, and you have an Apple TV. Exactly. That you can go try Sling with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, 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 you end up breaking even on that device. Cause, yeah. I mean, the device is over $100, and you're probably paying a little over $100. Yeah, it was a little over so, $100. Yeah. yeah, so it is just about yeah. even. So you went and bought an Apple TV, and you got uh, Direct TV for free. Pretty much, yeah. for three months. So. Yeah. Interesting, because I actually also tried Sling TV this week. Oh, nice! I did the trial, Lucha Underground, it's season four. Uh, we we relaunched the podcast around it, uh, so we I wanted to see it, and I had actually never seen it like live, like mm-hmm. when it was on with all the commercials and everything, uh, which is actually kind of fun on El Rey Network. Um, but uh, so I was like, well, we'll get Sling. We had some people over here to watch it, and we had actually uh, uh, one of the executive producers on a uh, podcast right after for it. But uh, so I got to play with that. I watched that. 
I added on the Showtime to the free trial because <laughs> oh, nice. there is a really good um, documentary about uh, Mauro Ranallo that does stuff with WWE and Showtime Boxing and, and MMA. Who's a great announcer and his bipolar uh, disorder. Definitely recommend it if you guys you know you you know grab a trial you know get it get it for a month on you know or whatever on Amazon add on or whatever and uh, it, it's definitely worth just to check that out. Um, and I watch like Monday Night Raw with it because you know I have another way to watch Monday Night Raw, yeah. a good legal way to watch Monday Night Raw. But I'm like, well, let's see how this this service and relatively um, now that in the middle of Monday Night Raw, Chromecasting it about into our starting of hour three of watching Raw, like I did get a little bit of buffering issues, okay. right? Like it did hang a little bit, um, and again, kind of restarting it. So I think that's kind of a regular thing. Um, I feel like if you take those and compare them to weird glitches and things when you had cable, that might not be too much different right. and typically better quality anyways. Um, from at least my memory and experiences of cable whenever I watch. I can't watch Raw on cable because they do the strobe lights and everything and it will just destroy the compression on a cable box oh, in HD. Like that's where I notice it. Okay. Um, but I do not see that when I'm streaming from the USA Network app, from uh, watching it on an Xfinity app, on the Directv app, when I had access to that. You know, like things like that. Like it is solid because the internet's more capable of delivering that compression than whatever they came up with cable twenty years ago or wherever. So, did you play around at all with? And, and I'd be interested in the two of you comparing and contrasting. Did you play around with the DVR feature functionality? I didn't really have a chance myself. About you, Krause. Have you? Have yes, you I have used. Um, so the Direct TV now includes it's a twenty hour DVR. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, obviously, you can record was twenty one hour shows or mm -hmm. however that breaks down. Um, for the most part, it works great. I have noticed that the episodes, unlike because that's all I have to compare it to Verizon's DVR, as soon as the show comes on, you could pull, you know, look in your DVR and you can see that there it is recording, but th you don't see those recordings until after the show is completed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, like last night, for example. My wife was watching something else. It ran over. She likes that Who Do You Think You Are show. Uh, um, and when she went to the channel to start watching it, she missed the first seven minutes. So then what she, it, you know, if she really wanted to see those seven minutes, she'd have had to wait till the recording showed up in the list and then mm -hmm. you, know, replay, you know, started again to catch those first seven minutes. So it's not like how on Verizon where it just pops up and you could hit play and just start it while it's recording. You have to wait till the recording's completed. Because it's a cloud DVR. It's not local. On exactly, because mm -hmm. it's a cloud DVR. Hmm. Yeah, but for the most part, it does work well. Um, I did add the Harmony remote based on Chilla's uh, recommendation. Um, and also, I don't know if, if you follow Paul Therott at all. He also rec he has very horrible things to say about the Apple TV remote. Which I can't I've heard agree some with. of it. I've heard some of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, wow, this is nice and slick, but I also keep holding it upside down and really like screwing yes, up what I'm watching. Exactly. No, it's tough, especially when you're tired, because that's usually when I have a I'm yeah. at home to watch it, you know. Um, you know, the late night John Oliver or Bill Maher or something, and that it's just like what I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually got one refurbished from Amazon for about half of what they regularly go for. Mm -hmm. And it works great. And so now I can have G um, say I would like to have Harmony do something. And Harmony has her own voice, which is kind of interesting. It's like my Google Assistant has a twin sister or something, you know? Because you say, hey, G, tell Harmony to I want to watch TV. And then she comes on and says, okay, turning on your TV. You know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So Awesome. Awesome. So, so welcome. Yes. Welcome. Welcome to the yes, I'm in the Welcome to the place. other side, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh one of Hulu has a trial there TV. Anyways, uh <laughs> so I had one that I was really kind of digging on this week. It's a weird little thing. I don't have a Nintendo Switch, but man, I, I would definitely pick this up. The Nyko Arcade Kit, a Nyko N Y K O, uh, they do a lot of different uh, uh devices and things for you know, controllers and things uh for, for consoles. And they did a cardboard uh 
Nintendo or arcade cabinet basically. Uh, the screen is the Nintendo Switch, just slides in there, and then the little like Joy-Con controllers uh, slide in, and they give, they give you a little um, um, joystick adapter, and you can play. And they're playing Street Fighter in the sample that they show here on. Uh, I believe this is in Gadget that we're looking at right now. Uh, it's a kind of a cool little thing. It kind of seems to be in the spirit of the um, the cardboard things that they just did that I can't remember the name of. Uh, with Nintendo and Switch, and 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 they're customizable. Like there's like the, they showed like these these little colored squares, and they made a cat with a heart and the flowers beside it. Uh, so uh, it's fun. It's twenty dollars. It's not going to be game changing as far as your arcade play goes, but uh, it's kind of a fun little thing that you can do and a nice little creative project maybe. So I just realized I just had it on Krauss the entire time. I'm sorry about that. So there it is. Gee, there wanna, it I is. Know how they got that, I want to know how they got that tricked out chrome plated switch that's in the thing next to the arcade cabinet. Is it chrome plated? It looks like it. it looks silver. Oh, it does look it's silver. Very reflective. Oh, yeah, in the picture. Oh, wow. That is a little reflective, isn't it? And it's a different switch than they're playing with because obviously the switch they're using. Yeah, is yeah. In that the one's in a dock. The that, controllers are in the cabinet. That one, so. Yeah, that one. They're probably just like tra- yeah, charging that one. No, they have that hooked up to the TV, it looks like. So interesting i haven't seen like a dock like that are they usually sideways like that no like, aren't they like up and down yeah they're usually standing straight up and mm-hmm. down so go check it out nyko it's the nyko arcade cabinet yes and uh it's 20 dollars wherever they do that stuff uh again it's from e3 so it might be quite out uh, just just yet and again I-, I mentioned pebble going away um that's because of a story this week rebel.io is uh is is going to be um, put together. I think one of the original guys that did Pebble it was a part of that. It's kind of a o- open thing. Um, it's 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 not Fitbit doing it. Uh, so while it's not going to be ready for you by the time it shuts down on June thirtieth, you should go and link your account now so you don't lose it, any data. So I don't know what's going to happen to your watch in the meantime. I mean, I'm sure it's going to work, but it's talking about like services like downloading apps and anything that needs to hit a Pebble server, I'm sure. Like, I can't imagine that the, the watch is going to simply stop working. Um, although it's probably going to be a problem if you're starting off a watch and syncing it from scratch, now that I think about it. So yeah, you might have a blank spot where you can't set up a new Pebble watch, which I don't know that I would. Um, so, uh, that's cool that they, that's kind of moving forward and there is some kind of support for someone because they're nice watches. Like seriously, for a lot of people, I think it's just enough and it's really sad that they went away. So there's that. Anything else you guys want to hit on before we head out of here to this evening? Well, I could always talk about games, but that doesn't have to happen. <laughs> What's going on in games well, these days? Um, two of the games that I am very interested in. From E3, where Anthem mm-hmm. and and Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I don't it, know how much you guys have covered this stuff. Uh, we haven't covered those in particular in that fashion. Anthem was described to me as like, was it Sony's um, um, Iron Man game or something? Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's Bioware and EA actually put it together. Yeah, a uh, lot. A lot of people were saying that it's that they're going after the De- Destiny mm-hmm. uh, crowd. I can see it. But the nice part about this is, is compared to Destiny, when you play Destiny, you create your character and you select their archetype at the time of character creation. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you have a character who can don individual suits that create the archetype. So, you know, if 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 you're playing with some friends and uh, nobody has a tank. Mm-hmm. You can jump in your tank armor mm-hmm. and then suddenly fill that role. And, okay, uh, now we have too many tanks. Maybe we need the ranger. So you can jump into your ranger armor and then fill that role. That was So those were th- some of the things I thought was interesting. This is this is actually the trailer. I don't think it was this particular one, but I was watching something for Anthem. And it was it was at this point where I'm watching this thing. And, you know, they do a crazy cinematic, not actual gameplay footage. Right. Like, well, it may be rendered in engine, right? Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, this is a really badass trailer. I want to see this movie. I don't care about the yeah, video game. <laughs> right. Like, Because then you're like, oh, I have to sit down and play this and dedicate like, you know, uh, 20 hours to it versus no, I want to just watch the movie, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, 
Uh, but that, that seems to be a lot of, I mean, it's so cinematic with video games these days, and I'm getting that effect a little bit. Um, Cyberpunk that you have listed here? Yes. That looks so much fun. And, so and good. And I did watch the Xbox uh, E3 uh, press conference, and I loved how they introduced it with the kind of hack deal and everything. And it's so, uh, you know, it, it's Cyberpunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, 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 that's basically what it is. Yeah, and I'm very, very interested to see where that game goes. Mm-hmm. And the developer, you know, the the Witcher series, anybody that's played that series says how phenomenal it is. Mm-hmm. So to see something like this from that those people. Now and they've already it, been working on it for, I think they said, five years. Jeez, now you make me want to watch uh, play some Witcher. Yeah. So I think I, I think I have it on, like, gold or something, so... That's awesome. Yeah, it looks a lot of fun. Again, it's it, again looks like a great movie. Not entirely sure if it's going to be, you know, what it's going to be for a video game. So, uh, so that's that's awesome. So go check that out. Uh, for some reason, my camera went away. So that must mean it's time to wrap the show, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Chilla, if you got one more thing to talk about, and I'll uh, fix what's going on here for the moment. No, I got. I, oh, you need to fix something. So, uh, I, where was the Adobe one? Adobe is taking and recasting their uh, video editing for mobile. Um, they brought out some Premiere Clip stuff, I think, a couple years back. Um, but they're kind of taking the best pieces of Premiere Pro, Audition, and After Effects and putting them together in one place. Right now, it's called Project Rush. Um, they are saying that it's scheduled to be released later this year. So this is a definite thing that's coming about, not just a rumor. Um, and I thought it was pretty interesting. You can actually, they're looking for beta testers and you can apply via a link on Engadget.com. Um, and it's available for Mac, Windows, and iOS. And they say that the Android beta will be coming soon. Um, obviously, it's not going to have everything out of those bigger bigger applications. They want to make sure that the the interface is consistent from phone to tablet to full size uh, full screen desktop. Um, but I thought it was pretty impressive that they're really trying to to go after the video market, much like they went after a lot of the photography market. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think, man, the, the thing hasn't hasn't really made the case for I want to edit things on my mobile device, right? Um, I was just going to ask like, you that. Like, Is like, that something like it's you want to do? Maybe eventually, right? If it makes sense. Like, well, I can do all the things, so why not? You know, so got my side cam here. Hi. Yeah, I, guess. I wonder if this is going to I'm wondering what the cost model for this is going to be. Um, I'm guessing maybe you're going to have to be part of Creative Cloud. I don't know. Makes what sense. I was interested in is this going to finally bring a iMovie competitor to Windows? An iMovie competitor to Windows. So right, you, yeah, because right, you you have me, you have you, Final Cut on the Mac, and right, you, you also have, you have no like. I was just talking to somebody today that was doing their web series that they're trying to get some actually like kind of real movement on, and they're completely editing it on Movie Maker, and I'm just like, what wow. version do you have? Because they took that away. Yeah, you it's, know. it's gone. So, which means whatever we're using, like, you know, you have completely limited old formats, you know, what, what's coming out of this, right? But even, even in iMovie, you can do some basic picture and picture. Right, you can right. Do some very basic. But, 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 there, but there's no, but stuff. it's still like, like surprisingly capable. And yes. you don't, you don't have that um, on the, on the other side. You can do some decent work on iMovie on the, on the iPad, like mm-hmm. decent work, like really get away with a lot on there. Uh, so I am interested to see kind of what they're going to do with that too. So looking forward to that. Well, uh, since I don't have a main camera, it's a good time to kind of move on with some stuff. Uh, you can, of course, please give a shout out to our friends at darkforgestudios.co. Uh, if you can imagine Dark Forge Studios can bring it to life, whether it's custom props, escape rooms, haunted attractions, or a custom set design, uh, Aaron has done it all and then some. For more, please check out darkforestudios.co. These guys, uh, or this guy, <laughs> uh, they, they, like I said, they're right here in the in the bowels of Sorgatron Media Studios, and uh, they have uh, he's been making some really cool stuff, and uh, including he made a giant axe last week, and we've been it was cool to kind of pop down and he's had the garage open under the you know the driveway over here next to us and uh, uh, seeing it working. 
I uh, see, see them at work for it. So really cool to see that uh, kind of operation happening too. So uh, thank you so much, darkforestudios.co for supporting awesome cast. So uh, we got some big weeks lined up coming up. We have Max Parker, the uh, game guy from the Post-Gazette. Uh, he's getting right just back in town now from uh, E3 and everything that he's had going on. So we're going to let him rest for a week and he's going to tell us about what's exciting. So you're probably going to want to tune in for that Kraus and see what's going on with for your sure. uh, Xbox world and video game world. Uh, so I know he's been very, uh, you know, big, uh, you know, seeing a lot from him this past week of an announcements and things that's gotten him excited. And speaking of video games, we're going to, we're also scheduled to have John Lang on, on the 10th of July. Uh, of course, first came to us because of looking for group. Uh, but he will also be, uh, you know, of course, involved in uh, uh, Academy Pittsburgh, the the coding ten week coding boot camp that you can apply to here in the city. That is like in its, I think it's the eighth cycle that they wow. worked on. That's a lot of people that now know how to code that didn't before. And a lot of great stories coming out of there. And of course, coming up, um, he's involved with Replay FX at the end of the month, end of July, uh, down at the David Lawrence Convention Center. And yes, I do intend to disappear for a few days. It's going to be very weird because I have a back-to-back The Gathering of the Juggalos podcast movement in Philadelphia, and then I'm going to play games for uh, three days downtown here in Pittsburgh. So uh, my end of July is pretty stacked right now. So uh, a lot of fun. And I mean, it's business too uh, in the long run. Business playing video games. Anyway. <laughs> so crazy. This is good, Sorg. Business is there good. There you go. Ron Kraus, crazy Kraus on the Twitter. Yes, sir. And of course, John Chichilla out Chilla on the tweets. On the tweets, Josh Chilla on the Facebooks. There you go. And of course, check out everything at Sorgatron. On the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com, all our great podcasts, including check out our, our, our special guest from Mindhunter that we're hanging out for another project here in studio. We got some pictures of them, and and uh, we're showing them some of the swag that our friends at Thrifty Podcast were, uh, have uh, dropped off in the studio here uh, uh, before. So uh, thank you so much, everybody. You got, Thanks to our awesome chat room that's been really, really good uh, tonight. Uh, uh, thanks, Alex, in there. Thanks, uh, 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 Amanda. Hi, Mom. Uh, <laughs> and everybody else hanging out. Brian Crawford with the River's Edge uh, as well. Uh, thanks for being part of the awesome, uh, the awesome 